Hello, this is Abby from Abigail's a Seal, and I'm going to show you an easy way to use a needlepoint chart or pattern um, using a Sharpie. So when working with a more complicated or detailed charted design, it can be helpful and enjoyable to chart in the larger elements of a pattern before you begin to stitch. I'm going to show you this process on my folk nativity pattern, which is available on abigailsaseal.com. I'm going to chart the larger elements of this design onto the canvas, and this is going to give me a framework when stitching so that I don't have to count as much. The materials you will need are a charted design, sharpies, you don't have to have different colored sharpies, but it's a nice visual clue when charting and stitching, a ruler, tape, and a blank piece of canvas. Tape your canvas down. Now canvas does have a grain, so make sure to place a salvage of the canvas to the left or the right of your design and not the top or the bottom. And the salvage is the orange line on the edge of the canvas. First, decide what you think are the large design elements in your pattern. And in this case, I think that they are um, the outline or the background of the design itself, the star, the um, manger structure, and the outline of the large flowers. Begin by finding the placement of your starting point on the canvas. Now I'm going to start at the very tip top of the design and outline. You can start really anywhere as long as you can easily count out additional elements from that point. You want it to be a good point of reference. For instance, if I drew the outline first, then wanted to draw the flowers, I'd have to count from the corner 10 intersections or so and then three intersections over or here. The more intersections, the more room for error. So instead, I'm going to start at the top, count down to the star, move down to the manger. Once the manger is charted in, I will place in the larger flowers. Now each square on the chart itself represents one intersection of the canvas, and an intersection is where the horizontal and vertical thread of the canvas crosses over. So we are going to place a dot on top of our canvas, on top of each individual intersection, wherever we have a square in the chart that we want to mark. Begin by marking your starting point. Now for me, this is going to be two inches down from the very center top. And the reason for that is that I have two inches of waste canvas on the top and I want to measure down two inches to get that very top tip marked. Then I'm going to count down on my chart how many intersections to the first star detail. And it is four intersections, so I'm counting down four and then placing a mark with my orange Sharpie. I'm counting how many are in between the detail and the beginning of the star itself. Now I'm going to count the star out. I'm going to mark out the star on my canvas. So there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now I'm going to find how many are in the horizontal bar. There are seven, so I'm going to mark out three intersections along each side at the very center of the star. And I'm just working following the intersections and placing a dot on each one that is a part of the star. Oh, and you'll see that I just missed up there, and that is totally okay. I'll know when I go to stitch, not to stitch that intersection in there, um, and it doesn't have to be perfect, but it's gonna give you a great point of reference when stitching. I'm gonna grab my brown Sharpie and start in the manger. So you'll see that there's one intersection between the star and the very tip of the manger. I'm gonna mark that tip and then just start counting down on the outline of the manger roof and even coloring in the intersections as I go to see them more clearly. So you'll see I have the very tip, which is one intersection. Then I move down by twos, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, all the way down until I hit the edge of the roof, which is three intersections down. I'm gonna mark that out. Um, and then I'm going to go back and count because it doesn't seem quite right to me, um, and it's true. I've actually missed um, one pair of intersections at the top, so I'm going to go ahead and add that in and readjust. Again, it's totally okay if you mess up. Just go back and adjust. I'm going to count down the manger. Um, this is a fairly long line, and um, so I'm going to have to be careful about that count and double check it. Now, rather than going all the way across, because that's so many intersections, there's a large room for error there. 
Um, and so instead, I'm going to go across um, the top again and do the right side of the manger roof, um, referencing the other side, the left side of the manger, to make sure that everything is looking correct. Um, and then I'm going to draw a line down, and rather than counting out those intersections, I'm just going to make sure it matches up with the other side. And again, once I've got that other side done, I can just draw a line across and make sure everything matches up. So I'm not, I'm reducing some of that counting. So I'm going to switch to my next color and I'm going to start doing the flowers. I'm going to count down one, two, three intersections down from the corner of the manger um, and then over one intersection to start the outline of my first large flower. Now I'm going to move on to the outline. It can be hard to keep track of your intersections as you work down a long diagonal line. So I'm going to use my chart as a checkbox, counting a couple descending intersections, marking the chart to show I'm about to mark the canvas, then marking the canvas and going back and forth. This essentially keeps me from losing my place. And then again, rather than counting out all the intersections in this line, I'm going to make sure that there are three intersections between the edge of the closest flower petal, just making sure everything is lining up correctly, doing that on the bottom two, then drawing those lines until they match up and meet in the corner. So we're finished and ready to start stitching and you can see that I've, I've just got those large elements charted in and it's just going to make stitching, um, you know, Mary and Joseph inside the manger a little bit easier. I can count down um, a couple intersections from the tip of the manger to start stitching the halos um, and then move on to the rest of Mary and Joseph and baby Jesus. I could also start in the corner here. Um, and work my way up. Either way is a point of reference for all the more detailed stitching and just makes the stitching process um, a bit more relaxing and just really fun. So grab your needle and your thread and happy stitching!